I'm just going to open MS Paint and draw this for you. Okay, we're doing educational today. People have lots of good questions, and I have the program that is necessary to answer them. Okay, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this shit? It's crayon time, motherfucker. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you what to do with Queens Against Battlecruisers. Okay? So focus up. What do you do if you have a battlecruiser that teleports into your base? Let's start with this. This is a program called Microsoft Paint. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a Zerg hatch. Okay? This. This is a Zerg hatchery. Look at how happy it is. Let's even fill it in. Let's fill it in. What? Right, let's fill it in with crayon. Is that a fill? There it is. Oh my god. That's beautiful. Okay, perfect. Perfect. I'm glad there's a crayon setting for this. So this is a hatch, right? And then we're going to draw with the largest size we can, a mineral patch. This is your mineral patch. Look at how much money is here, it's amazing. Let's draw some happy Vespine geysers. We'll do these as triangles. There's a Vespine and there's a Vespine right here. Gorgeous base, absolutely phenomenal. Let's say it's four minutes 30, what time is it? What time do we build spores against Terran? Four minute 30. 4 minute 30 spores, but where do we put them, coach? You put them... Where do you put them? Right the heck here. Just one, right there. The drones can move past it. They're pretty good. They're pretty good about navigating around the spore. So the drones can still do their normal business. Unimpeded by this spore, you don't actually lose any mining efficiency. And then, what about queens? How many queens should you have? You should have seven to 10 queens. Seven to 10 queens, what? Why though? Why so many? Three to four inject. Three to three plus spread creep slash defend. And these are separate teams. The queens who inject should be in the mineral line. If a banshee comes in, but there's a queen and a spore, that banshee isn't going to get any damage done at all. But if the queen is over here, and the banshee comes in up here, they can shoot the happy drones that are going from the extractor, and they can shoot some of these without the spore. The spore provides detection in a radius. Let's give a nice detection radius here. This is just a kind of best guess at what the detection radius is. We'll do a thin line so it doesn't confuse us too much. Okay, let's say this is the detection radius. This is the detection radius of the spore. But the firing range of the spore is not that large. It's not, it's smaller. So let's do the firing range of the spore. Let's do a red. It's something like this, okay? So the spore can shoot stuff if it gets close, but it can detect stuff a little bit further away. This is our happy spore in the center. Let's just undo this so we can clear up some visuals. Okay, let's say there's a heckin' battlecruiser that comes in. It just teleported in. You hear a sound in the game and you know there's a battlecruiser that teleported. It's probably teleporting on your base. So let's say there's a queen here. We're going to do the queen as a star because it's what they are. Let's do queen, do maroon. Let's say the queen is here. She's next to the base so she can inject the base. And then if something shows up, say there's a big heckin' battlecruiser right here, what she wants to do is run to the opposite side of the spore. Queens have a greater range than battlecruisers for their basic attack. So what you wanna do is try to get maximum value for that range. If the battlecruiser is right next to the queen and they're both shooting each other, you're not getting advantages from the queen's range. So the battlecruiser comes in and this 
girl should run as fast as she can away from it so the spore is between her and the battle cruiser. Battle cruiser is here. Let's just do a big arrow. This is the arrow. This is the battle cruiser. Oh god, a tier three unit in my base! The queen runs over here, and then all of her sisters over here, they're like, oops. They're all like, shit, what's going on? What's this? What? And they're just going, they're running over to help. And then once you have all of these over here, you have all the queens, suddenly this battle cruiser is not scary anymore because all the fam is here and they can help defend. And I would say if you have about four queens for a battle cruiser, you're probably fine. Make sense? Where is the BC? This is the BC right here. That's the arrow. So the queens, whenever the battle cruiser comes in, whatever queen is in the mineral line, which is where they should be to defend against banshees and liberators and battle cruisers, she should go away from the battle cruiser. So the spore is between them, and then all the fam can run in and help her out. And there's one other thing that you should consider too, which is sometimes there are some barbecue cars that drive in and you want to make sure that you look at your mini map and go over to your other base and just watch out for Hellions. Because sometimes the battle cruiser goes in and Hellions go in at the same time. You want to put your queens on the battle cruiser and your Ling Bane or your roaches, whatever your ground force is against the Hellions. Where are the drones? They're in the worker line. I wanted to try to minimize the clutter here. When is the optimal time to complain about battle cruisers and how broken it is that they can escape for free? Well, you can do that all day long. It doesn't have to be in a match. One thing that I really enjoy is when people complain about a unit outside of that matchup. Any tips on microing fights? So, sure. So let's, let's just mark this as this is Battlecruiser Defense Procedure with Crayons by Neuro. 